Welcome. I'd like to tell you about the derivative and how it relates to physics. I'm not going to tell you everything there is to know about the derivative. This is just a very, very tiny part of it. It's basically so that you can read your textbook, your physics textbook, and get something out of it because your physics textbook is calculus-based. And uh, it's important that you understand the derivative and the antiderivative right away, at least to some extent, so you can get some, so you can get a little bit more out of your text when you go to read it. Okay, so the derivative, uh, to explain it, uh, I'm first going to take a look at a position versus time graph. So if we have an object that um, its position versus time graph is given by, um, say, maybe this graph, well, it turns out that the slope of this graph uh, is going to be equal to the velocity. So the velocity is equal to the, the slope of this graph. And the slope of this graph is, um, if this is delta x and this is delta t, then slope is rise over run, and so that would be delta x over delta t. I'm hoping that looks familiar to you. Okay, well, what do we do if the slope of this graph is changing? What if the slope of this graph looks like this? Well, now the slope is different here than here than here. In fact, the slope right here we might consider to be zero at the origin. So it turns out that our slope is varying as time goes on. And it turns out that the derivative can tell us how it varies, how the slope varies. In fact, the derivative is the slope of this graph. So what we do, uh, let, me, let me put a function onto this. I'm just making this function up. Let's say that this function, this graph is x equals 2t squared. Okay, if I'd like to know, say, the slope right here, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, do a rise over run, maybe of these two points. And um, let's call this one t. And let's call this one, if this is delta t from there to there, then um, this would be, this other point would be t plus delta t. That's what that would be. This right here, would well, we're going to call that delta x. Now you might say, hey, that's not the slope right here. That's this kind of the average slope between these two points. And you'd be right. What I'm finding is the average velocity. But it turns out that the average velocity becomes the instantaneous velocity if you let um, this, this delta t get real small. So you're going to get these points getting closer and closer. So the limit... As delta t approaches zero um, it, of delta x over delta t. That's what the instantaneous velocity is. Now, what we can do is we can shorten this. This is a lot to write. And this whole thing can be shortened to just say dx dt. It's the derivative of x with respect to time. Okay, so how would I actually get the velocity? How would I actually get this, this derivative then? How would I actually do this limit? Well, let me put in, um, since delta x over delta t is going to be um, v average, or back to v average, is equal to um, x final minus x initial over delta t. For x initial, that's going to be, uh, when I put t into there, it's just 2t squared. So let's write that. I, this is going to be a long next step. So I'm going to start over here, put a big long line in there. And for x initial, I'm going to put in um, x initial is just 2t squared. That's x initial. Okay, what is x final? X final is um, right here, and I'm going to put in uh, t plus delta t in for t. 
And so when I do that, I get the following. It's going to be um, 2 times t plus delta t squared. And that's all going to be over delta x. That's v average. Okay, let's expand this out. Let's expand that out. So if I expand that out, that's going to give me 2, and this is going to be t squared plus um, 2 delta t times t plus delta t squared minus 2t squared. All that over delta x. Oh, I'm sorry. This is not delta x. This is delta t. Hey, did you catch that? I hope so. All right, so this is going to be delta t. All right, well, you're going to see right away that the, this ter these two terms are going to cancel each other out. And so um, what I'm left with, and let me get another sheet of paper to do this. Leave that so it's visible. What I'm left with here is that V average is equal to, that term is going to cancel with, with this term. And so I'm just left with uh, 4 T times delta T plus um, 2 delta T squared all over delta T. All right, well, we can cancel out a delta T term here. So boom, boom, and then get rid of one of those. Now, the instantaneous speed is um, the limit as delta T goes to zero, as delta T approaches zero. So if we let delta T approach zero, then what we get is um, we're going to get 4T, Plus, when I as that goes to zero, that term's going to go to zero. So that's four t. So our instantaneous velocity is four t. Now we shouldn't be surprised that there's a t in there. That just means that with every single time that you put in, you're going to get a different instantaneous velocity. Let me say that again. Every time is going to give you every different time is going to give you a different slope. In fact, at t equals zero. The slope is 0. But at t equals 1, the slope is 4. So that's how that works. Now, um, I'd like you to see something here. We started out with a, a function of x is equal to 2t squared. And it turned out that the velocity was the derivative of x with respect to time. And that was, um, that turned out to be, when we did all that rigmarole, it turned out to be 4t. Well, we don't have to go through all that rigmarole because um, if we did this enough times, we would see that there was a pattern that happened. And this pattern is simply this. To go from here to there, to take the derivative, you're going to take the exponent and multiply it by the coefficient. So that would be 4. And then you subtract 1 from the exponent. So that would be t to the first. In other words, what I'm saying is if you have, um, say, x is equal to some constant c times t to the nth power, that the derivative of x with respect to time is you just bring the n down and multiply times the c. And then you're going to lop one off of the exponent. Now, if you understood that, then you would understand that x, if that's um, 7t cubed, that the derivative of x with respect to time is, you know what I'm going to tell you it is? It's 21 times t squared. I'll see you in the next video. I'm out of time on this one. This is just part one. See you in the next video.